Well, good morning, everyone. I'd like to welcome you here to the meeting of the Minnehaha County Commission. It's a cold and frosty day, so we appreciate all of you coming out. Um, just kind of before we get started, I just want to acknowledge that yesterday was Veterans Day. Had an opportunity to go to the um, program at Lincoln High School yesterday. It's always a great program. Um, Commissioner Karski and um, Commissioner Barth were both uh, recognized along with many other for their service to this country and I just wanted to recognize them as well this morning. Thank you very much for that service. We'll go ahead and start with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Madam Chair. Go ahead, Commissioner Barth. To point out that we have uh, veterans throughout the county organization, including our auditor, Bob Litz, and uh, uh, it was a very nice uh, thing, and I don't feel like you got enough acknowledgement for being there, but thank you for attending. Oh, absolutely. I mean, obviously, we have a lot of veterans throughout the county, and we do appreciate all their service. We appreciate uh, the great training that they get in the military and that service and then, then sharing it with the um, the county and the citizens of Minnehaha County as well. Okay, so I've got a couple of housekeeping items. Just a reminder to silence your cell phones. That's always a good reminder for me. Uh, meeting documents are available for review somewhere. Usually they're down by Commissioner Heiberger. I'm sure they're, they will be down by Nick Commissioner Heiberger just shortly. Um, and Craig is here if you need a listening device. So that takes us to our routine business. I'd consider a motion to approve the agenda. So moved. Second. second. Motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Next item is to approve commission meeting minutes for November 5th, 2019. Move for approval. S second. Motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Next item are bills to be paid in the amount of $3,505,431.68. Pay the bills. A second. Any comments? Commissioner Bart. Madam Chair, uh, today's bills include uh, uh, $3,036,000 that were basically passed through from motor vehicle registrations and other fees uh, to the state. And so when you take that out, our bills this week are 469000 Much more in the normal range. So thank you. Any other comments about the bills? At a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Next item are reports. There's a number of really good reports um, in here. The first one was a report from Emergency Management Surface Ambulance Report for April through June. Um, I know I had a chance to visit with Commissioner Barth, and uh, we may invite um, Jeff Luther to come back and kind of go through that report with us. I thought it had a lot of great information in there. Um, there's also a mobile crisis team statistics, which also um, shows what a great job uh, that mobile crisis team does for um, folks and keeping people in their homes. Uh, Minnehaha County Sheriff's Report also contains extensive amount of information. And the, finally, the Minnehaha County Highway Monthly Report, which is also very well done. So I'd commend all of those for your review. Takes us to item five, personnel actions. I'd consider a motion to approve routine personnel actions. So moved. Second. It's a motion and a second. Any comments, questions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Next item is um, to reclassify the vacant administrative assistant, which is currently at a pay grade 12, in extension to an administrative secretary at pay grade 10, and approve immediate recruitment. Carrie, good morning. Good morning, Carrie Deaver from Human Resources. This is a straightforward request. This position's uh, becoming vacant, and upon review and looking at the position duties and the organizational structure, it's our recommendation to change it to an administrative secretary. Chuck is here as well if you have any questions, but that's what we're asking for your support for this morning. Any questions, comments? All positions change, so I, I appreciate you taking the time to look at this and bringing this recommendation forward. I'd consider a motion. Motion to approve. Second. Motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Thank you. Uh, next item, item six, abatements recommended for approval. There are none. Item seven, 
Um, so first reading and authorize the auditor to publish notice of hearing on December 3rd, 2019 on an amendment to ordinance MC 31-5-18 for licensing service ambulance service in Minnehaha County. <coughs> Jason Gearman, good morning. Hi, Jason Gearman, Emergency Management, Minnehaha County. Uh, this is just a first reading of the ambulance ordinance change and we just request that you authorize uh, them to publish it. Any questions? I'd make a motion to authorize the auditor to publish uh, notice on this uh, uh, hearing. Second. Motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? <coughs> motion passes unanimously. Thank you. So that takes us to the next item um, is to authorize the auditor to publish notice for proposals of electronic monitoring. Warden Matson. Jail Warden. Uh, we would like to publish an RFP for a new EM agreement. Um, now is just a good time to do it. Um, JDC is jumping on board at the same time that we're doing with this, so they're going to benefit from it as well. And in addition to that, we're going to ask for some technology with a with a vendor to. Uh, do some things with pretrial services as well, with some facial recognition app applications that they can, that they have now. So, questions for Ward Matson? Make a motion to uh, uh, approve the pub or and publish the notice for the proposals for electronic monitor. Second. <coughs> second. Motion and a second. Any further comments? Questions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Takes us to item eight, planning and zoning notices, and there are none. Item nine, petition for compromise of lien, there are none. So this brings us to our opportunity for public comment. If there's somebody here today who'd like to speak about something that's not on our regular agenda, this is your opportunity. Madam Chair, Mr. Uh, I know that uh, uh, Senator Steinhauer is here on another issue, but it's always a blessing when we have one of our legislators present, and I wonder if he might talk to us about legislative issues that might affect counties. <laughs> <laughs> Busted. <laughs> it's always nice to be recruited, right, huh? <laughs> Thank you, Commissioner Burke. I think the city would like to be able to recruit people for public comment as opposed <laughs> to receive public comment. I continue to be concerned about um, one size fits all solutions coming out of the states, and I worry about county funding uh, for judicial issues. Many counties are struggling with road costs, uh, so I hope to address that this year in the legislature. And I've uh, have not had an opportunity last night to bring it up at a gathering with some other uh, legislators and got some support and those that were also adamantly opposed because uh, they don't like anything that might smell like a um, an ability to raise taxes, and I look at it as a local control issue. Uh, I don't want to go to peer and do to you what we complain about the federal government doing uh, to the state of South Dakota. So um, concerned about you, and um, I'm also interested in nursing homes and the plight of our elderly and the fact that we've got aging facilities and uh, rules that don't allow them to be readily replaced or moved. So uh, those are a couple of things that are on my mind. Uh, obviously, the state's going to be tight, I think, on money this year. So um, just balancing the budget is always a big issue. I've been reminded by the auditor. Obviously, we all know you, but if for the audit sure. for the record. Sure. I'm Senator Wayne point. Steinhauer, District 9. That's Hartford, Humboldt, and Crooks in the northwest part of Sioux Falls. Thank you. And thank you for the opportunity, Commissioner Barth. <laughs> thank you. Uh, Senator. <laughs> uh, hi. <laughs> That uh, Senator Steinhauer was at the um, Veterans Day ceremony yesterday morning, also at Lincoln High School, and your brother-in-law. Uh, yes, my brother-in-law Dick Ambrosius was recognized. Uh, he's um, Purple Heart, uh, been a very dedicated veteran, but now he's working with an organization called uh, Warriors Never Give Up, which is giving warriors, uh, uh, combat veterans, an opportunity to socialize together, hunting, fishing, and doing different things. So, um, great cause. And, and well-deserved recognition, so. Yeah. Thank you for that, I'll tell him. Well, thank you for being here this morning and thank you for all the work that you do up in Pierre, all of, all of the folks that represent us up in Pierre. Right. 
I think, um, as you said, uh, Commissioner Bender, we're all just trying to do our part. So thank you as well. All right. Thank you. Madam Chair. Unless Commissioner Barth wants to recruit other people for public comment. <laughs> During uh, the Senator's long-winded speech, uh, <laughs> a, another... Uh, you uh, should talk. <laughs> I do. <laughs> another uh, representative has walked in, and I would invite uh, Representative Milstead to come up and, <laughs> and share her wisdom with us, uh, since we are so lucky to have you here. Mm. You get to come to the mic since you've been so <laughs> politely invited, and if you just give your name and your address just for... Uh, uh, Rhonda Milstead, and I do represent District 9 in the House, um, live out in the Hartford area, and I'm a little out of breath because I spent 20 minutes trying to find a parking place. That's, <laughs> That's all I have to say. It's awesome to be here with all of you. I appreciate and respect all of you for what you do. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you for coming this morning. And we know that parking can be a challenge some days, especially after a long holiday and... I understand there's a lot of juries that have um, been seated this morning. So thank you. Okay. Commissioner Barth, you recruiting anybody else or we can <laughs> <we> move on? <laughs> okay. So if there's nobody else here for public comment, we'll move to regular business. That takes us to item 10, which is to consider a motion to approve a resolution to increase planning commissioner compensation. Scott Anderson, good morning. Good morning, Scott Anderson, Planning Director for the County, and <clears throat> I have uh, prepared a short memo for you for your review as well as a proposed resolution, and this is a resolution to slightly increase the compensation that we provide our planning commissioners. Uh, it will go uh, from $15 to, to $25 per meeting plus 42 miles, oh, sorry, 42 cents per mile for the planning commissioners to uh, come to the meeting <coughs> here and return home, and then they get a one-time recognition dinner allowance of $15. That used to be $10. This <coughs> proposed resolution would go into effect on January 1st. I've calculated the maximum amount that it would increase the budget, and that would be $690. We have discussed this at our budget hearing and uh, the county commission budgeted an additional $1,000 into that uh, line item for planning commission uh, expenses. So uh, it, we have, this has been on our radar for several years and uh, we're just moving forward with the proposed change. I've been here 15 years. It's always been that same amount and Olivia Larson from the auditor's office helped me do some, or she did all the research. We could never find when the fees were actually set, so I can't really tell you how long they've been in place, but it has been the, the practice of the county to provide um, compensation to our planning commissioners, and uh, this, the, the resolution has been reviewed by the state's attorney's office. It is legal, and we have quoted the uh, codified law which allows uh, planning commissioners to be compensated. But I'd be glad to answer any questions you have. Commissioner Karski. How many of them? Um, do we pay mileage to each one of them, or is that just something they have to claim? Uh, we, so how this works is we, of course, have their mailing address, mm -hmm. and we uh, keep an attendance. So we pay them for, based on their mileage for every meeting that they attend, we pay them once a year. So in December, they'll get a check for the entire year that for mileage for the mileage for every meeting that they have attended. And the recognition dinner is: do we take them to McDonald's or what are we doing for fifteen bucks? <laughs> <laughs> well, um, so normally we we in the past have um, tried. We we like to sort of. Uh, go out and go to a location that we have that's in the county that we may have worked with in the past we've gone to like straw bale winery we've gone to the safari bar we've gone to the that new anderson brewery no relation on uh, by rowena <laughs> and then we've sort of had like a get together and they the planning commissioners will bring their spouses or whoever that they would like to bring, and we all just get together and have a meal and sort of enjoy. Uh, that's what we call our recognition dinner. <laughs> so. Other Madam questions? Chair, I, I just point out, just like for us, uh, when we 
have these issues in front of us, uh, there are friends and neighbors might be upset with us, and it's it's not all uh, uh, roses in, in being on the planning commission. Uh, you know, people are sometimes quite irate. Uh, most of the time they're not, but there's always, uh, you know, uh, growling going on. And so I, I really think it is a, a uh, uh, an important job for the county. We have a great uh, planning commission. And uh, one final thing is, as liaison to the planning commission, I don't get those those uh, uh, stipends or whatever. I'm paid by the county for my job as county commissioner. So uh, this is for the rank and file members of the uh, planning commission. And also maybe for the public, the planning commission consists of seven members. Um, six of them are appointed by the county commission uh, at large throughout the county, and then we have one county commissioner that serves as sort of the, the liaison. So it, the total board is seven people, six um, citizens and one county commissioner. Well, I think we would all agree it's a very important service, and if we were compensating them um, by the hour for the time that they put in, um, between reading what oftentimes are very thick packets of information to prepare um, and then attending meetings that sometimes can go uh, past my bedtime. Yeah. And uh, it's, it's a tremendous service to the county that these folks do, and um, I'm certainly in support of this. Any other questions or comments? If not, I take a motion. Motion to approve. Second. Motion and a second. Roll call vote, please. Heiberger? Aye. Karski? Aye. Barth? Aye. Benega? Aye. Bender? Aye. Motion passes unanimously. Thank you. Chair, one final comment is that uh, Senator Wayne Steinhauer was chair of that commission for, what, 20 years? 25 years? 30. <laughs> well, thank you. That's an incredible service. Okay, so that takes us to, I think, the topic that draw, drew such a good crowd today. Um, we have the briefing on the Wall Lake Trail project. Tessa, good morning. If you could just introduce yourself and give your address, that'd be great. Thanks. My name is Tessa Schwanz. I am a Wall Lake resident. Um, do you want the actual physical address? or Yes, please. Okay, Thanks. it's 26526 Lakeview Place in Hartford, South Dakota, 57033. Thank you. Yep, you're welcome. Um, as I said, I'm a resident of the Wall Lake area. I'm also a proud resident of Minnehaha County where I've lived here for almost 20 years. Um, before moving to Minnehaha County, I lived out on West River. I was a resident of Lawrence County. And before that, I grew up in Corson County, which is way up in North Dakota, by North Dakota. Um, I have been a hairstylist in the Minnehaha Sioux Falls area for about 20 years, but I've been a hairstylist for about 29 years. Um, I was also an educator for a Fortune 500 company, Matrix Essentials, for 18 years. And I went around talking education and teaching um, artistic um, education to other stylists around the state of South Dakota and North Dakota and Nebraska and Colorado. Um, with that in mind, I'm also a visionary. Um, I'm also a person that has a lot of ideas and dreams and hopes and wishes of what we could do to work together as community to create um, spaces that would be educational and reflective for all people. Um, I want to thank you guys for allowing us to be here today and our hope is that in our meeting today that we will understand the the Wall Lake vision is to create a trail that is not just going to be a four mile trail around Wall Lake but it's going to help to improve the quality of life around Wall Lake and really help to ensure the safety, the preservation, and the conservation of the Wall Lake area. Safety is definitely a primary issue because we have a highway that's uh, the state highway, Highway 42, which if any of you have ever driven it in the morning, it's a pretty fast highway, and it's definitely not one you want to run or bike on, you know, to, to feel safe. Um, we also have the county highway, and then we have the township highway that runs to the west that kind of flanks the conservation district as well. Um, this four mile trail is a dream and a vision, um, not just by me, but by a lot of residents around the Wall Lake area and 
honestly in the community as well. As the community expands and as Minnehaha County is growing, um, I think we're going to see definite growth to the west and to the north. And with that being said, it would be really a great way to um, kind of plan ahead as far as um, looking in the future for a trail to maybe connect Sioux Falls to Wall Lake or connect Hartford to Wall Lake as well. And Wall Lake could kind of start as that median area by having the pre-existing four mile trail around that at that point. So the reason that the project kind of started was again, like I said, a vision, but it's also for the safety recognition of the residents around the lake as well. Um, watching a woman uh, walk her baby in a stroller is kind of um, disheartening when you see that happening in the middle of the road. And so it was just kind of one of those things that helped push us to maybe start doing something and being part of a solution for the area. Um, why Wall Lake? Wall Lake is an up-and-coming area. It's um, one of the areas in Minnehaha County that we have one of the only, the county's only swimming beach as well. With that being said, I know that there's some issues that some of the residents have talked about with, you know, things that are going on in the park and in the beach area, but we just want to make sure that that's, you know, maybe a, um, handled as uh, a separate issue from what we're looking at with the trail versus what's going on ongoing with the parks and area out there at this point. Um, it's 207 acres of lake. Right now there's 220 homes approximately that live on the lake and an average population of anywhere 800 to about 1,200 in population. So um, why we want this concept is just um, to make sure that as that area is growing and as we're moving forward that um, we have a trail that's already set aside for the conservation and the protection of those valuable art outdoor areas and spaces. So I know there's going to be a lot of questions today and I have some people that are with me today. Um, Chad Hanish, who is the president and project director of Infrastructure Design Group. He's the one that's going to help walk us through the PowerPoint presentation that we've prepared. And we also have John Parker with us, who is the director of the Conservation District. And um, he's going to have some words to share as far as where the um, thought process is with the Conservation District as well. And if there are any questions during the presentation, feel free. Um, we have a lot of information to share. And so um, with that, I'm going to go ahead and invite up Chad Hanish. Thanks, Tessa. Uh, Chad Hanish with Infrastructure Design Group. Uh, residential address is 48349 250th Street, Gerritsen. And work address is 1111 North Lake in Sioux Falls. Uh, I grew up just north of Wall Lake actually cleaned the beaches and the bathrooms and mowed the the county grounds there when I was younger for summer jobs but so the the presentation that we have is a similar presentation that we did at the public open house that was held on October 28th and really the, the whole goal of it was just to generate discussion we're at concept level you know big big thoughts um, but a lot of support behind the project and so what was the next step it was to hold a public open house and generate more conversation and get a feel for additional support out there so I will step you through that <coughs> so again it was informational in nature um, just provide some project background some concepts uh, lines on paper and then discuss funding alternatives so Tessa went over a lot of the background, um, some of the volunteer team members. There is a nonprofit entity that was formed called the Friends of Wall Lake um, that Tessa can visit more about. Uh, part of that public open house was to seek out additional members to serve on, say, a stakeholder committee as this project uh, comes to fruition. Uh, the idea was to get representatives from the north side, west side, east side, south, south side of the lake 
you know, maybe two individuals from each side that are the stakeholders as the project moves forward. Um, so we don't necessarily need to get, keep on holding uh, public forums. We'll do that periodically, but at least to get representatives from each side of the lake that can speak for the, the bigger group uh, on each side of the lake. So we had sign up sheets for that. Um, and then again, it was mostly just informational and what we highlighted is there's no decisions made. Uh, we don't want a bunch of misinformation out there. Um, so what they see on paper is just lines on paper to generate discussion. Um, then we discussed uh, some of the alternatives that could be, uh, the costs associated to those, um, and some of the efforts that were completed to date um, by some different entities. So again, no decisions made, um, just lines on paper, and the lines that we showed on the paper were mainly shown there because there's public right away there. Uh, there are additional routes that could be, there's lots of uh, alternative routes, uh, but those would go through private property and we didn't, we weren't comfortable showing those because uh, we haven't visited with those property owners to date. So we just picked right away for right now, just for discussion purposes. Um, to build it, we'd anticipate a minimum of four phases, um, probably more than just four. There's lots of different options within these and that's all part of having the public open house and generating some stakeholder groups. Uh, whether we construct within existing right away or obtain easements is a, is a big factor out there. So just budgetary costs, and these budgetary costs are really based on a similar project that we did for Lake Compesca, trail around Lake Compesca. Uh, and they use transportation alternatives money through the DOT. Um, and so these costs were based on going through that route. Now, if you constructed this privately, it could be less than this, but just for, again, um, as a starting point and to generate some discussion, we're, we're utilizing these numbers from a past project at Lake Compesca. There's lots of variables to this at this stage, wetlands, wetland impacts, uh, right away, uh, archeological findings uh, and funding in itself, whether it goes through the state transportation alternatives, um, grant process or privately funded. When we're talking about the grant options, there's really two that um, really are applicable to a trail project. The recre recreational trails program is through Game Fish and Parks. Um, that provides 80% funding. Um, generally, the grants are 40,000 to 100,000. Um, so, you know, for a project like this, when we're talking 3 million potentially, doesn't go a long ways, but there is money available out there. And that's made available to um, any entity, really. Um, the transportation alternatives is the one that you really have to be a government entity or school, local, regional government type entity to apply for that money. Um, that provides up to, I don't know where they come up with 72%, but provides up to 70%, 72% of the funds, and the grants are up to 400000 And that's the one that we use for Lake Compesca for and apply for each phase at a time. There are state requirements associated to going these routes. The other option is private funding, which I know the group is um, part of that public open house was to get some um, some volunteers to serve on a on a funding uh, committee um, that will go out and solicit private funding uh, to help pay for some of this project. So donations, um, they've set up a, um, a funding option through Sioux Falls Community um, Foundation to help uh, facilitate that. And they've est established the Friends of Wall Lake nonprofit organization. Uh, and, then, and then why we're here today is Minnehaha County uh, partnership that we're, we wanna request. Schedule wise, um, and this is pretty hard to read, but really the main um, message here is it's a long <coughs> process. And this schedule is based off of going after the transportation alternatives uh, money. 
you, you apply once a year, you, you really aren't notified. I mean, you, you apply, you do a letter of intent, then you do an application, then you do an interview with them. And that's a six month process in itself. And then once you get, if you're awarded, you get the funds, then it's a year of design and the environmental review and the archeological review. Um, you really don't construct that first project for three years two minimum, almost three years after you're notified of the funding. Then you can apply every year though for a different phase. So once you get going, if there's four phases, you know, it might be seven years out and you could have it all done. And that's all based on going the grant application route. So it's again, just for, just to give you an idea of what that might look like. So really the, why the group here today is the request for the county. Um, one, to go after that transportation alternatives money, uh, we would need a grant sponsor, uh, whether it's a city or regional government entity. Uh, and so we thought of Minneapolis County with the, the park that's there. And what that also does do is you can utilize CCOG, Southeastern Council of Governments, to apply for those, that grant money. Um, you don't necessarily need to you know, utilize us, you're already paying CCOG to do some of that. And so that's a, a benefit of going that route. Um, the other ask is providing maintenance uh, of the trail um, or 5,000 a year for maintenance purposes. Um, and again, that nonprofit entity, they're generating money with that in mind also is that that would go towards maintenance. Uh, and then to really kick the project off is the 25,000 a year for four years to help uh, with the initial design and application needs, um, maybe some initial right away on any county roads that are out there. Um, but feel like that plus the, the funding and the private funding um, that the group is doing would get kickstart the project, move it forward. Um, as we mentioned, you know, it's $3 million potentially so we didn't figure you guys had three million, so we were hoping for 25,000 a year. Uh, with that, I think we can open it up to questions. Questions? Mr. Bemiga. Well, thank you for your presentation, and I appreciate your vision because at some point Sioux Falls and Wall Lake will be part of a suburb probably. Um, is the grant uh, that you're looking for going to answer some of the questions about traffic counts and how many people would use the bike trail, so to speak, how many walkers you would expect? They don't really focus on counts. Um, I mean, it is all about safety. Mm -hmm. uh, so you do need to show a need, uh, but it doesn't necessarily ask for counts because uh, they recognize some areas that apply for the grant money they don't have a trail out there right now, right. and so it's hard to come up with some of those numbers. Um, but they do really focus on safety. So what would be the mechanism to get some of the answers to those questions about traffic counts and people counts and all that stuff? Um, I think there could be, I mean, traffic counts, some of that data is most likely available or we can do traffic counts. I mean, as an engineering company, we could do traffic counts. Uh, the county has traffic cameras. Um, to get some of the pedestrian counts that might have to be, you know, the group out there doing something on their own. Mm -hmm. um, for Lake Compesca, none of that was ever requested as part of the grant application, mm -hmm. but we did provide public input um, as part of that application process that really emphasized the need, uh, provided pictures of people walking out on the road and mm -hmm. Again, cars going by them at 35 miles per hour right next to them, and that provided a lot of support. Well, obviously, if safety is a major issue of the conversation, and I think some of that information uh, of the number of people we're going to be trying to serve and how big of an area they're going to need to stay safe, if you will, is going to be an important part of that conversation, I would hope. And with the safety funds, with that transportation alternatives money, one of the requirements for that, because it is about safety, is it can't be part of the roadway. It's right. gonna be separated from the roadway. Okay. Commissioner Karski. 
A few questions, if I may. Um, first of all, who owns the roads like West Shore, North Shore? Is that township roads? Or are they part of a road district? Who, who owns those? The North Shore area? Any of those roads around there. You got North Shore Place, um, Westlake. I'm sorry? On the north side of the road, that is um, the state highway. No, not the and highways. I'm talking the, internally right inter around the lake it's, itself. Kevin Nordruf, Nordruf, he owns a lot of the land that is on the north side of the lake. Um, I don't know exactly where it's at in relation to Wall Lake Oil, but I think it's just west of Wall Lake Oil, and it goes all the way to the township and then south to the township, almost like that whole area of land is all owned by Kevin Norder. The roads are private though? The roads are yeah. private, yeah. Yep. So yes. the internal, all those internal roads are private yeah. roads maintained by the? the association. The, you have an association, okay. So that kind of goes to the next question. You know, insurance and such always comes to mind. Who gets sued if somebody falls, slips and falls on the bike trail? Is, the association on the trail are you guys going to be insuring it you're looking to the county for maintenance but who who gets sued if somebody gets hurt that's a good question okay. and it's not one that we've really gotten to that point yet as far as with the conversation um, in our friends of wall lake nonprofit committee we do have a lawyer that is working gratis for the nonprofit, and I'm sure he would be able to answer some of those questions as we get to that phase okay. of the of the trail. Um, but it's a very good question. And um, as far as you know, who would take over ownership of the the trail? I guess that is to be seen. As far as if we would want the county to, or if we would do it in in conjunction with each other, like between us. The conservation district and the county. Maybe we could do it in a partnership. Okay. Okay. So, so. still undecided, kind of up in the air. Okay. Thank you. Other questions? Commissioner Barth. Um, I mean, I'm sure there are quite a few people I think here uh, that have an interest in this project, and maybe they should at least stand up and let us see them, or uh, maybe they would like to say something also. Okay. Commissioner Barth is really very <laughs> hospitable today. So <laughs> if all of you want to stand up, great. Thank you. If there's any of you that would like to come to the mic and speak on this, you're certainly welcome to come forward, identify yourself and your address. Thank you. John Parker, District Manager for Minnehaha Conservation District, 2408 East Benson Road, Sioux Falls, 57104. Um, our interest is was they approached us to look at supporting them in the bike trail um, the Gevick land that lays to the west we already have an established walking biking trail of about two miles depends on how you walk it um, there that's a crushed asphalt um, surface um, it's not primarily great for biking but for hiking um, talking about numbers we keep a game camera count <laughs> on the trail and we average between 3,000 and 3,500 people on the Gevick site in a 12 months series. Now some of them people are the same people come seven times seven days a week some come twice a day you know so but it does get used so there is some usage there so if we compound and make it a little bit larger and a little more incorporative with everything that's there I think the numbers would be a lot larger you know on that so with that being said, we have discussed in the board a couple of three months ago, and I think Jeff might have been in attendance of that one, I'm not sure, but we have a couple areas. One is the existing parking lot on the east side of the Gevick site, and then there's a piece of ground to the north that could be transposed into a parking lot or a trailhead start. And then we're thinking that the little trailhead that goes to the west would someday be a conjunction with the trail that's running to the east. So that would be additional. And then plus ours on there. So in overall, the district were in support of that. And uh, 
we're doing some things with the US SDSU and doing some research innovation stuff that's hopefully will start taking place in the spring on the Gevig site. So our usage out there is going to change drastically over the next 12 to 18 months too for people not so much public all the time but be a lot more traffic. So there'll be a lot of things going on. So Commissioner Heiberger. Any questions? Not necessarily for John, but just for overall. I appreciate the presentation, too, and I think it's kind of a quality of life issue. Um, I believe that several years ago we talked about Highway 42 and the, and the speed zone there and lack of shoulders, and I haven't been on 42 for a while, but in the, in the danger to bicyclists, I think bicyclists actually were in here one time in a presentation on you know, other issues and just said 42 is just not a good place to ride your bike. Um, so it's not just that stretch, it's a long stretch of the way, and I don't, yeah, so thank you. Okay, that's all I had, though. Thanks. Thanks, John. Do I need to give my address again? I think so. <laughs> <laughs> Rhonda Melstead, 46273 Park Place in Hartford. Um, I think that um, it's just a big deal creating outdoor space in Minnehaha County. As you see this whole area growing, um, providing some spaces like that for people is very important. Um, Wall Lake is, like she said, the only beach in the county. Um, bike trail, walking trail, um, not just for area residents, but for people that want to go see the great outdoors. I think it's a big plus for our county. Just thinking of it along those lines, as Cindy mentioned as well, quality of life. That's what this is about. Um, and it just brings people to our county too, like it or not. You know, you provide those things, they're gonna be here. Anytime you add something like that, people come. And so I don't like to talk money, but economically, it does affect all of us. So. Thank you. Other questions, comments right now? Hello. Hi, Paul Borboom. I live at 46258 South Shore Place, Hartford. I'm a pretty avid walker uh, from South Shore to the county park and once in a while to the conservation area. And uh, it's a wonderful place to live, love it. But it's a very, uh, a safety is one of my concerns. I walk 266th Street and uh, usually with a dog or two. And I've learned to stop anytime a vehicle's coming because I get crowded off the road. Uh, by my friends and neighbors and strangers. Um, sunlight, cell phone, distracted driving, speed, all contribute to that. And so I would love to see, um, I know it's gonna take a while, it's a long-term vision and project, but I would love to see this happen out there. Um, again, my wife and I, she walks all the time in the summer. Um, I walk almost year round uh, when the lake freezes and I've got a lot of room to walk, but <laughs> off the roadway, but uh, I would love to see this happen, really support it, thank you. Thank you. Other comments, questions? Well, you guys have given us a lot to think about. Obviously, you know, this isn't an opportunity for us to take in information, and um, we'll have to s set a schedule to, to further are these conversations. I'm curious if you've had conversations with um, Scott Anderson and with DJ Boothy from Highway about these projects? Yes. You have? Yes. Okay. All right. Well, thank you very much. If there aren't any other questions, yes. we will be in touch. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Thank you. Right. Okay. So that takes us to item 12, which is a briefing from the treasurer on the, um, the status of the bank reconciliation project. Good morning. Good morning. Um, just to keep you up to date, reconciling is current. Um, um, September is already done, and she's working on October. It should be finished today. Um, we're also working with, uh, we have a meeting set up with the uh, state auditor. He's going to come and take a look at what we do, how we do it, and see if he could make some changes in it. Uh, a lot of the things that you've seen happen lately are because, in large part, because of the new accounting system and because of turnover in staff. But Jeff has been more than happy to come and help us. And he, uh, the auditor's office has also asked that maybe his people could participate in that discussion. So Jeff's supposed to get back to me and let me know because he's going to be in Sioux Falls one of these days this week. And he's going to let me know when he can meet and we'll do it. So things are, I think, going in the right direction. Any questions? Commissioner Benica. 
Pam, I appreciate the fact that you're making this current, and I appreciate the fact that you called Jeff. Um, is one of the questions when Jeff comes from legislative audit is to help you review the systemic uh, concerns that seem to be maybe the cause of the problem? Yes. That's a good answer. <laughs> <laughs> Thank quest you. Questions okay. or comments? I would just add to that that perhaps you could visit with Jeff about just the actual processes um, that are in place for cash handling as it flows through different departments and comes to your department so that we can standardize that and make sure that along every step of the way, um, before it gets to your office as well as in your office, that we've got good policies and procedures in place for, um, for handling that so that as staff turns over, which is inevitable, um, we're able to pick that up quickly with the next person. Quite frankly, though, there hasn't been a lot of staff turnover. The other lady was there close to 50 years, and the one before that was there for many, many years, too. So that's not really. And the system we had in place has been in place f since f over 50 years, more than 50 years. So, but we're looking, we're going to get Jeff's advice and what he thinks we might be able to do to make it more better than it is and make it more. I would, I would particularly appreciate it if you would ask him about policies and procedures I throughout the whole entire county. I intend to ask him about county. that. Okay, thank you. Madam Chair, Commissioner I Bart. just want to again uh, point out that there's Jeff Schaefer with the Legislative Research <laughs> Audit and Jeff Barth, the County Commissioner. Oh. Pam <laughs> is consulting with the auditor, not with the commissioner. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Although I'm sure you're available, right? <laughs> I am, and we do <laughs> consult occasionally. Okay, thank you very much. Thanks yeah, for coming thank this morning. Thank you. Okay, that takes us to item 13, which is to consider a motion to approve and authorize the chair to sign the final design agreement with Short Elliott Hendrickson for structure 50-206-100. DJ Boothy. Commissioners, DJ Boothy, Highway Superintendent. Um, in August, you authorized a contract with SEH uh, for the preliminary engineering design uh, for this bridge structure. This structure was inspected in 2019 during the summertime and we found some uh, degradation such that we had to post it for um, a reduced weight load and this is on our county highway system and we don't like to have posted bridges on our county highway system uh, it was not repairable and so we decided to uh, move it forward in our five-year program and replace it next year <coughs> and so uh, beginning in august we did the uh, preliminary engineering design and have came up with a proposed design of a 110 foot long concrete girder bridge. It'll probably cost about a million dollars next year. And with your approval, we would like to sign this agreement for final design uh, with SEH and begin uh, the final design, hopefully get plans out for bidding in January, maybe, maybe in February. I can stand by for any questions. Commissioner Heiberger. Is this, is this um, could you use this in a big grant or is this too late to to even consider that. I just popped into my mind now, so I didn't forewarn you that I was going to ask a question. Sure. It would definitely uh, qualify for the big, uh, big grant. Uh, with the timing of those grant funds, uh, we're not necessarily willing to wait. Okay. So Thank you. Well, that's why we want to move forward with our own funding. We are applying for three bridge improvement grants this year on other okay. structures. Thanks, DJ. Other questions? Not it. Entertain a motion. Motion to approve. Second. Motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Thank you. Thank you. Takes us to item 14 just to authorize a consume and blend alcohol beverage license for Rungi Enterprises on December 12, 2019. Olivia. Thank you. Um, Rungi Enterprises would like to hold their holiday party and uh, chili cook off at the Isaac Walton League on December 12th and they would like to have a consume and blend license uh, so that they can serve uh, liquor while they're out there. Mr. Peterson from the Isaac Walton League has confirmed that this is an event that they have scheduled and I've not received any concerns or complaints from Sheriff Planning and Zoning or State's Attorney's Office. Second. Motion and a second. Any questions? All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Takes us to item 15, which is to approve the 2020 liquor and wine renewal applications. Olivia. Thank you. 
We have the renewal applications for the 2020 licensing year for liquor and wine. So just uh, for the record, I'll quick list them. We have Baltic Corner, The Barn Inc., uh, Bottoms Up, Chasers Food and Spirits, Garrett's and Sportsman's Club, uh, Rocky Run Golf Course, Monarch Lounge and Package Store, Red Rock Bar, River Ridge Golf Club, Safari Bar and Grill, Sioux Empire Fair, The Alibi, TDC Enterprises, uh, Cook's Conservation and Gun Club, The Riviera by Rocker, Rocco's and Wild Water West. Um, these were all supplied to the State's Attorney's Office, Planning Department, and Sheriff's Office. Again, no concerns or objections were reported, and none of these entities had violations within the current licensing year. Questions? Commissioner Karski. No question, but just to reemphasize, none of the listed establishments had any violations. <clears throat> it's, it's great to see, and just to congratulate them, because that just doesn't happen by accident. They are managing their facility properly so uh, just a shout out to those facilities and then move approval second there's a motion and a second any other comments questions <coughs> all in favor aye. aye any opposed motion passes unanimously thank you and uh, that takes us to item 16 with for liaison reports are there any liaison reports today commissioner heiberger I actually have several um, last week, Monday, I spoke at one of the legislative summer studies that uh, was chaired by Representative Reed and Senator Steinhauser, um, who was just here. Um, I think it went fairly well. Their, their subject was on um, what services are available for people who are struggling with uh, mental illness issues or behavioral health issues after their release from criminal justice or where, what do we use for referrals and stuff. And so you, I believe, were all provided with the notes from um, my presentation. And then I also um, gave each one of the committee people a list of what, depart what um, nonprofits were available. I'm just going to give you a list of the questions that they asked coming back. I think that um, the, the presentation was well received. Um, afterwards, speaking to several of the people, they said this was information we did not know. And so one of them was um, a mobile crisis team, what type of savings do they have, which we had a report today on the numbers, um, and that is it been a significant savings, and, but it's not just the dollar amount, it's the people that we've saved from throwing in the criminal justice system. They've asked about the capacity for transitional housing. Um, Craig is still working on those reports to give back to that group, but um, just kind of over the top is that the tr transitional housing is over 80% filled, which is considered at capacity, and there's usually waiting lists to go to any of those transitional housings. And um, speaking with people um, on the side that I don't know that it'll be in the report is that they said even though they're considered full, even though if there's one or two beds available, but the problem is is sometimes just even getting into the program as an outpatient that those programs sometimes have one or two month waiting list, sometimes three months waiting list, and so the judges aren't even able to move them forward um, into those programs and you get somebody out of the system and then they're supposed to just maintain until they can get into some type of program. They asked about capacity of the triage center going forward. Um, they asked about, um, they were concerned about public safety expenses that have been dumped on to the counties and um, I, they asked what our costs actually would be, and I went back to the South Dakota Association of County Commissioners, and they are going to try to look into those numbers and uh, maybe use legislative audit to see what each individual county's expenses were for criminal justice um, related with mental illness or behavioral health. And as you heard um, Senator Steinhauer say today that not everybody is the same when it comes to the impact, and that kind of was his concern, is like we can't do a one-size-fits-all glove for the problems that we're experiencing across the state. Um, I would say that most of the people in the room that I testified to did not realize that the state counties do not receive any sales tax revenue. And I did talk some about our budget issues, and I think most of them were surprised at the budget issues that um, counties have. It, um, and I will say that not everyone around this table was a representative or a senator. There were um, nonprofits and other different people in this specific group. And then the, um, that was on Monday, and then on Tuesday, I was um, I sit on the oversight council for improvement in criminal justice response to people with mental illness. Um, I've been on that a couple of years, and um, we looked at the, the uh, uh, reviewed over the 2019 annual report, which isn't out yet, obviously, because we were reviewing it. But I would encourage you when it comes out to look at that, and it'll be on the um, UJS's website. 
Um, I'm not, I would think by the end of the year the report will be out, come out, and it talks about some of the um, improvements we've made in criminal justice response to mental illness. Um, and so there have been some good things. Um, we also had an update on the mental illness screening that's being done in the jails. Um, there was a pilot program for that. Uh, Minnehaha County um, Sheriff uh, Milstead came and spoke on changes that we're making in Minnehaha County, and Pennington also spoke on some of the changes to make. We had a pilot program, and now what can we do to make those um, those screenings more accessible to the judges and to make them more meaningful than that our initial was, and so we continue to work forward on that. Also talked about um, CIT training, which um, the state was looking towards that we had a pilot program where we had a state official who did the training across the state for um, cri um, crisis intervention training, looking at making that a permanent position because we've had such success with training of um, like the state's attorney's office, the public defender's office, the law enforcement across the state. Um, we are the only state in the United States that has a central um, educational spot for CIT training. And so it's, um, it's being very successful and we're looking at having the state continue to fund that position. Um, I also did a bi-weekly meeting with a safety and justice challenge meeting. We meet with the, um, the second circuit court judge and staff members and just talked, um, one thing that might not be known is that the security grant that the UJS second circuit applied for was approved and that's to look at security issues in the juvenile detention center. And so we just found out that we did that we were accepted for that grant, and now we'll just see where the move go forward with how we're gonna go forward and move, move that um, assessment forward. And then I also had a monthly phone call with the Safety and Justice Challenge. I've said as a NACO re representative for the Safety and Justice. And if you haven't looked at it yet, the October 28th magazine, instead of me reading it to you or telling you about it, just to look at the legislative, uh, legislative introduction to protecting health benefits in the jail. We talked about this on our phone call. Jeff actually called me when he saw it in the article. Very good article, and instead of me relaying it to you, maybe you could just look at it. There's also another couple articles in here that were timely that were talked about on our phone call. And I think that might be it. Oh, one more, sorry. Um, the Sioux Empire Leadership Board meeting was this last week also, and we did our planning for our next meeting, which will be November 20th. And so that continues to move forward. Madam Chair, I'd like to ask Cindy a question here. Um, Commissioner, you know the issue, but our audience doesn't. So when we talk about preserving people's medical coverage when they're uh, incarcerated pre-adjudication, what currently happens is you're entitled to, say, veterans' uh, medical benefits, but no, you lose that the day you walk into the jail, and then Minnehaha County picks up those costs. So this bill, these bills in combination would allow you to keep your Medicaid, Medicare, veterans' benefits, disability, pre-adjudication right. so that the county would not have to buy all of your meds uh, <clears throat> themselves, and uh, that would be... I don't know the number, but I bet the sheriff could find it and tell us it's some ginormous number. This also mm -hmm. affects our JDC, the CHIPS funding and the Medicaid and Medicare funding that our children have. In the JDC. And you are considered innocent and pr until proven guilty, but yet all your, your um, rights have been taken away the second that you have been accused of something. And so it has dumped a lot of responsibility on counties. Um, this is a NACO issue that they have been working really hard on to push forward and it finally seems to be getting some traction that this isn't fair to veterans who've been accused of a crime but or any of them, children who've been accused of a crime but have not been found guilty. All of their benefits have been taken away. And then there's the reinstating program afterward, or pr process afterwards. So, Former commissioner uh, from Fall River County, uh, Mike Ortner, is that his name? Yes. That was his signature issue yes. as a county commissioner and it still hasn't happened, but there are two bills proposed right now, um, and I did actually mention them to Dusty Johnson's staff, but it would be a big savings for us if, if that mm -hmm. extra penalty, undeserved, um, pre-adjudication-wise, uh, would be uh, remediated, I guess. Okay. Well, thank you. Thank you for um, all of the work you did in Pierre and uh, just pointing out, just this, just like everybody else, we have a constant educational process for folks as as people change out. Um, I would like to just give a shout out to Craig Dewey because I know Craig spent a lot of time to getting information for um, for um, that testimony and stuff. So thank you very much for that.
um, other liaison reports? I would, I would just note um, that uh, yesterday was the funeral for Jean Abdallah. Uh, tomorrow night is the um, annual law enforcement appreciation dinner that uh, Jean uh, kind of put together, and he's been a great supporter of law enforcement and has also um, spent lots of years in service to the, our state. And so um, just wanted to um, remember him a, a bit today. Okay, so that takes us to new business. Any new business, Commissioner Karski? Just uh, looking forward to next week's commission meeting. It's going to be an abbreviated form of the business meeting with a lot of attention placed on the work of our facilities task force and a presentation um, by Keith Severson, a local CPA. Um, <clears throat> Craig has worked hours and hours with Keith on getting this ready, and it's um, it, it's going to be a great, I'm optimistic, a great meeting and a very hard look at all the stuff that we have going on with facilities. So looking forward to it and love to see more people here from the public if they're interested. So pay attention. And I would agree. Thank you for all the work that you and Commissioner Benega have done on that and for Craig supporting that. Um, I know it has been a tremendous amount of work and I am personally looking forward to to hearing the results of all those great brain trust we put together to um, come back and report. So thank you. Um, Madam Chair. Commissioner Barth. Uh, just uh, going back to the Wall Lake uh, discussion we had earlier, both uh, Senator and Representative that were here live on Wall Lake, and their third representative from that district, Mike Saba, also lives on Wall Lake. So they do have a voice in Pierre, and uh, I was glad to see two of the three here. I agree. Any other new business? Commissioner Benegas. Just briefly, and I think we all got a copy of the uh, memo from uh, Chief Justice, so to speak, or the um, Robin Hellman about the uh, award of a $50,000 grant for review of JDC. So That's what I just said. I know, but I wasn't listening. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. It I didn't say great news. It deserved yes. to be mentioned yeah. twice. Yes. So we look forward to, to um, any grants that we get are always greatly appreciated. So. I was listening, but I have a cold, so I can't hear a thing <laughs> today for some reason. You I think mean. two of the five of us That's have right. colds, so I, we might have to yeah. hand out masks during That's that right. meeting <laughs> to protect the rest of us. Um, any other new business? Any old business? If not, I'd entertain a motion to recess the Minnehaha County Commission meeting. So moved. Second. second. Motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Or any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. <coughs> uh, we will recess for about 10 minutes, so about 10.15 we'll go ahead and um, come back.